I am Dan Barker. I'm co-president of FFRF. And Amit Paul is director of communications. And you've read Amit's work, his, especially his uh, weekly wrap-up of all the good things FFRF does every week. But he also produces press releases and uh, other written communications. And Amit, uh, you uh, helped us to work on this uh, press release about the Manchester bombing on Monday night. And uh, it, quite a moving story. But you had a, a personal interest in this because your daughters know about the singer. Ariana Grande, right. Yeah. Yes. I never heard of her before. but Yes, so some people in the office hadn't. And I had, uh, for obvious reasons. My uh, younger one is 11. And she is in the core demographic of the Ariana Grande fan base. And that's why the Manchester attack to me uh, was uh, so personal. And uh, it was so doubly horrific because I knew instantly that a lot of the victims would be around uh, my younger daughter's age, and I was proven correct. Uh, a lot of the uh, people who died in the suicide bomb blast uh, were in the age range of uh, 10 to 15, 18. And then the other group was uh, their parents or, uh, and guardians who got them to the concert. And a lot of those who were killed were just young children. Yes, yes. So what did, your so. what did your daughter say about that when she... Well, Dan, uh, both my daughters were completely taken aback as any reasonable, rational person would be as to why anyone would uh, target uh, an Ariana Grande concert in this manner. We now know that there was a religious motivation behind the attack. Which is why FFRF had to do something on this. It's the biggest news event of the past some days, overshadowing even President Trump's uh, visit abroad. And a major motivation, if not the motivation, seems to be religion. Uh, Salman Abedi, uh, the uh, alleged uh, suicide bomber, uh, born and uh, brought up in Britain, but Libyan of origin, seems to have had contacts with ISIS, the notoriously fundamentalist group in Iraq and Syria, and uh, seems to have become much more devout in the past uh, couple of years, and uh, obviously uh, engaged in a very... Uh, uh, literalist, uh, fundamentalist interpretation of the Muslim scriptures and carried out the attack uh, because of that, uh, at least in good measure. So did he think he was going straight to paradise? Yes, Dan. So you bring up a very controversial aspect of Islam uh, that's been much talked about in the past uh, some years, at least since September 11th, and that's jihad. Uh, very debated, uh, uh, endlessly uh, sort of, you know, talked about even uh, among Muslims as to what that actually means. But the hardcore fundamentalist uh, segment of Muslims uh, do interpret it literally as holy war uh, and a war um, uh, upon unbelievers. And so Salman Abedi probably, uh, in, uh, to a good extent, that was his motivation that he thought he was waging war on the uh, unholy and the um, uh, non-believers. Um, and that also at a concert that he uh, quite certainly saw as sinful because it was secular music, which is frowned upon again by fundamentalist Muslims. The Freedom from Religion Foundation has always said that religion is dangerous. So this is one example of the danger of irrational thinking. Uh, absolutely, Dan. And, you know, FFRF, we here at FFRF work um, uh, very strenuously day in and day out for a secular government, uh, primarily here in the United States, but also abroad. Uh, you know, we'd like there to be governments that believe in the separation of religion and state. And this shows, uh, Salman Abedi and ISIS show the danger of uh, such governments because uh, their ideology is in good part derived from the Wahhabi Islam that the Saudi government nurtures and protects. And ironically, President Trump went there to pay obeisance to the most fundamentalist and the most dangerous government probably that exists in the world. Uh. And uh, as I said, the ideology of ISIS, of Al-Qaeda, which was born in Saudi Arabia, and of uh, many such Muslim organizations is based on the very Wahhabi Islam that has been, been, been brought forth in Saudi Arabia under the protection of the Saudi monarchy.
Well, thanks, Amit, for all your hard work, all your communications work, all your good writing. Maybe we can hope for a more secular and less violent world in the future.